Hello, my friends. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today, I'm taking a first look at Topaz Photo AI, the new app that is just now out and available from our friends over at Topaz Labs. It is a combination of some of their key AI utilities, which is basically denoising, sharpening, and enlarging. It's a great combo product. And now that it's available, I want to walk through and kind of give a quick tour of what it does, show you a couple of examples. I do want to point out that they're having a special promo offer between now and October 7th. It's regularly priced $199, and it's going to be $159. But they're also mentioning that there is a coupon code that gives you 15% off. I'll put it here. It's Get Photo AI. Now, I'm recording this before that page is updated and released. I don't know if that coupon code, it seems like it's going to work on top of the $40 promo offer, but you'll have to check for yourself. If you use the link down below, they pay me a referral commission that is an affiliate link and it's a free way to support me. No extra cost to you, of course, but that helps me out quite a bit. And you know, I'll be here every week making tutorials about all these things. So let's take a look at it. I have loaded a photo and I'm using this in standalone mode, but you don't have to. And the, the key thing here is really this autopilot mode, which as the name implies, it's autopilot. It's basically taking a look at the uh, image itself and deciding what needs to be done. So this is going to vary, in other words, based on the image. And I'll show you a different example in a minute. You can see it says it's using raw image data. This is a raw file and it says subject is detected. The cool thing is, as you can see, when you hover over the name or the word subject, it highlights the actual subject. I'm zoomed in a little bit so you can see the results, but you can see that it's done a really accurate job of automatically masking both the camera and the reflection of the camera, as you can see up there in the um, preview window. I will go back to that. So you can do that. You can also refine the selection if you want to. You just click on here and it defaults most of the time. It's doing a reasonably, in fact, really accurate job. I've run a number of photos through it and there's a couple instances where it's slightly off. You can adjust things like sensitivity, uh, which could increase the area that's covered by the mask. You can also increase or decrease softness, which is basically how hard or soft is the edge of that mask. In this case, I've got a reasonably hard edge and I would leave it because it looks great. But if you want the effect to kind of fade from the subject into the uh, background, if you will, might want to increase softness. You can also choose a couple of different options here, but I'm going to go ahead and leave that the way it is. And I want to show you some of the results. You can see uh, down below here under image quality, remove raw noise is ticked uh, because it's using raw image data and the subject was detected. And it says right here, this is basically what it's doing to the photo. Here in this autopilot menu, it says it's removing moderate raw noise. If I click this drop down, you can see the strength is 13. I can lift that if I want to, at which point, the section up here where it says using autopilot settings will basically be turned off because I won't be using autopilot. I'll be doing my own personal adjustments. Now, there's no sharpening included in this. Apparently, it thought it didn't need it. But what I want to do is go ahead and turn that on. And it's going to pick up some lens blur. And if you give it a minute, it's got to recalculate. And being an AI product, sometimes it takes a moment or two. But it automatically detected that lens blur may be an issue here. And I'm going to go ahead and let that sharpen. And let me show you the results. OK, this is all updated. I want to show you the results. And by the way, you have a strength slider here, of course, if you want to increase or decrease the amount of sharpening. And you also have subject only, which is checked here. And words, the sharpening is applying only to the subject if that is checked. Again, I've clicked over that little button and you can see it's highlighting the subject, which is the camera itself and the reflection. I'm going to leave that and I like it like that. But if you look here, you can already see that the noise is significantly reduced. And if I come across and show you the camera, you can see that this looks actually really good. I mean, it just looks fantastic. If you look at the text on the front of the lens and all the uh, noise in the background, including across the screen here and across the lens, it's detected that noise and removed it. And one of the things I think is really cool is all these little dust spots that are on this lens, they stayed. Um, and it, uh, of course, recognized the noise and removed the noise. So it's it's doing a really good job. I mean, this is using, you know, years old technology at this point, which is denoise AI to do the denoising and sharpen AI to do the sharpening. Now, the difference is this is a combo product, so you don't get all the same models and all the same kind of ability to tweak, but it's designed as really an autopilot kind of product. And honestly, I think it's doing a fantastic job. So I'm quite pleased with that. Um, recover faces, I'm going to show you that in the next one and also enhance resolution, which comes into play if you're going to upscale. I'm going to show you that in the next photo. Let me go ahead and get that one for you. 
Okay, now this one is a really old JPEG. I took maybe 12, 14, 15 years ago. So not really a particularly good shot in any way, but I wanted to point it out because it is just a JPEG, but also I wanted to point out that the autopilot menu up here in this upper right corner is different. The subject is detected. If I hover over that, you can see how that is highlighting the people. Now it's slightly missed the girl a second from the left, some of her shirt, and that's where coming in and hitting refine will help adjust that. So I might increase the sensitivity. Now I've gone all the way to 86. It's not 100% perfect. As you can see, it's still missing part part of our shirt here. But if I go any further, it starts getting more of the wall. And so that's one thing to be aware of is you can't go in and brush mask or something like that. But the sensitivity does help increase the real estate, for lack of a better word, of where the edits are being applied. So just FYI, um, I definitely recommend experimenting with that if you need to. I'm going to go ahead and click done. But you can also see that it says here that it's recovering four low quality faces. If I highlight on the word faces, it does show you that that's picking them out and it is very accurate in that case. Okay, now it did pick up the noise reduction. And again, in the drop down, it said normal and strength of 27. I can adjust that if I want to. Sharpening, it said I didn't really need it. Recover faces, of course, came into play because it's a really old JPEG and it's got faces in it. So if you take a look at it, just the before and after, you can see that that face is much clearer and cleaner. And of course, any noise has been removed. So I think it looks really good in that case. It's done a great job. And the background, any noise that you might see, like in this upper uh, section of wall, I think is nice and clean and smooth. So I think that looks fantastic. Overall, it's done a really good job. If I come down to the enhanced resolution section, it's noticing that this is a low resolution file. And I could pick, let's say, 2x, for example. And maybe I want to just move in the preview window around so that I can get a better preview of the image as it zooms in because I'm now basically doubling the size of the image. So this will give me a nice close preview of what it's going to look like. Okay, and here we go. So if you look at this face on the right hand side, there it is before any of these adjustments and there it is now. So that's had noise removal, a face recovery, and it's enhanced resolution in, a, in terms of a, a gigapixel, if you will. It's 2x in size. If you look at that background, you can see it's a lot smoother in terms of noise. And like in this upper section here, it's a lot noisier and this face looks fantastic. So that's essentially how this tool is working. Now, of course, I can save image. And when you do save, you have some options to be aware of as well. You can add a prefix or a suffix. And also you have this toggle button here to add applied filters to the file name. So you can see that's automatically on and it says denoise, enhance and face AI. So all that is being appended onto the file name. So it's a great way to look at a file in your library and say, Oh, I use those things on that. So that's kind of helpful. And you can change the location. And in fact, you can preserve the input format. In this case, it's a JPEG. But let's say I have a raw file, which I did in the first time. I can save that as a DNG. So again, a raw format, which is great to have. So I can go in and do further edits. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. I'm not going to save this. But that's my quick overview of kind of what to, uh, Topaz Photo AI is how it works, what you can do with it. I would say right out of the gate, it looks like a great product. I'm excited about the fact that they brought these three different products together because one of my challenges with Topaz in the past has been, although all three plugins, that would be Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, and Gigapixel AI, although they're all great products, it's sometimes it's just a drag, to be honest. It takes a lot of time to go from your host to Denoise and then back and then do some edits and then go to Sharpen and then back and then you want to enlarge it. You go to Gigapixel and back. Those kind of things just take time and I like the efficiency of having it all in one place and I honestly think the results are looking really good. So hats off to Topaz. Great job. Check it out at the link below if you'd like to and I'll be back soon with more stuff. If you enjoyed this video, Check out that playlist about all my Topaz videos, and I'll be back with more real soon, my friends. You guys take care, and until then, adios.